Hello, my dear students. Once again, I welcome you all in this lecture series on angiosperm taxonomy. Today, we are going to see our fourth lecture on leaf types and modification. With respect to the study of angiosperm taxonomy or angiosperm systematics, the leaf is very much important and its characteristics are important in description of any plant or in preparation of monograph in the plants. So, myself, Dr. Pitambar Humne, founder, Botany for You, and working as Associate Professor and Head Department of Botany, Dharampet M.P. Dev Memorial Science College, Nagpur, Maharashtra, India. Today, we are going to see the different characteristics of the leaf which are important in relation to that of angiosperm taxonomy. Friends, the total number of content of this lecture will be typical structure of leaf, then types of leaf that is simple and compound leaf, then phyllotaxy that is of the different types, then type of stipules, then morphology of the leaf in the form of leaf bases, then margins, type of apex and surface, then type of venation and last the modification of the leaves. Here most of the topics which are included in this lecture are even important in exam point of view of UG and PG also. This is a typical structure of the leaf. Usually there is a question in the UG and the typical structure of the leaf include the different parts. As in earlier classes of our lecture series, we have already seen any part that is leaf, branch or the flowers or the fruits which are always develops from the stem and hence here from this stem we are able to see the development of the leaf and this leaf includes the different parts that is the petiole and the lamina. This complete is a leaf and the scale like structure which is present at the base of the leaf is known as stipule. The stipule may be present in the leaf or may be absent. If the stipule is present in the leaf, then the leaf is known as stipulate. And if the stipule is absent, then the leaf is known as extipulate. Even the petiole may be present in the leaf or may not be present. There are the three different types on the basis of presence and absence of the petiole. If the petiole is present, then the leaf is known as petiolate. If the petiole is present but it is very small, then it is known as subsessile and if the petiole is completely absent then it is known as sessile. Then this part where the lamina is attached to the petiole is known as leaf base. In the different plants the leaf bases are also the different which is also one of the taxonomic character. Then from the leaf base there is a margin and even this margin will be different in the different plant. This is a apex of the leaf. Again there are the many different type of the apex in the different plants in the dicotyledons as well as the monocotyledons. Then 
from the base to the apex there is a vein and this is known as midrib which run from the base of the petiole to the apex in some leaves there is a presence of single midrib in some leaves there are the presence of many midribs here also in this diagram we are able to see there are more than one midrib and again on the basis of presence of single midrib or the presence of many midrib there are again the type of the venation that we will see in the part of the venation from this midrib again there is a development of the laterals of the primary order then laterals of the secondary order tertiary order etc and in this way there is formation of net like structure in the dicotyledons which is known as reticulate venation so such a type of the typical structure is found in any leaf if it is a monocot then the type of venation will be the parallel and if it is a dicot then the venation will be reticulate in leaf types or the type of leaf basically there are the two different types that is simple leaf and second one is a compound leaf in simple leaf we see here the lamina is undivided right from its point of contact to the stem to the apex means if we see the attachment of this leaf to the stem then from this joint of the leaf it is a single part such type of the leaf which is undivided without any joint that is known as the simple leaf or in a simple language we can say that if the lamina is undivided then it is known as the simple leaf but if we see this rest of the leaves this one this second and this third one then we will find that here the leaf is divided into these three different segments in second leaf here there are there is a division of the lamina into the many segments and again the number of segments are much more in the third diagram all these three are the examples of the compound leaves in which the lamina is divided into number of segments and each segment of this compound leaves is known as leaflet but whenever we are seeing the books or the description then we are seeing even there is a utilization of the word and that is known as pinna so if we see that pinna these are the pinnas so don't confuse with the leaflet and the pinna that this single segment is known as leaflet while this whole part that is bearing the secondary rachis and the leaflets which are present on it that is known as the pinna so not to confuse with the pinna and the leaflets here there are again the types of the compound leaves into palmately compound and pinnately compound first of all we will see the palmately compound leaves here in the first leaf we will see here there will the presence of the stem then from the stem here there is a presence of the part of the petiole and then there is a presence of the joint and because of this joint such a type of the leaves are considered as a unifoliate compound leaves this is very common example in case of the alicicarpus in a family papilionesi here there is a development of the two leaflets that is bifoliate condition in third diagram here there are the development of the 
three different leaflets in fourth diagram there is a development of the four leaflets and in the fifth diagram there is a development of five leaflets so in any of these if you see that the palm p a l m palm means we know that here our palm so such like if we spread it then we will find that such type of the condition will be there so this fingers will be considered as a leaflet so such a type of the arrangement in which all the leaflets are developing from the same point or the common point then that type of the compound leaves are known as palmately compound leaves means the arrangement of the leaflets just like to that of the fingers on the palm that may the unifoliate bifoliate trifoliate tetrafoliate or pentafoliate or even seven foliate also or the septafoliate so such type of the different type of the leaves are present in the different plants here the another type of the compound leaves and that is known as the pinnately compound leaves this name the pinnately compound that is the for there is a formation of the pinna like structure here the pinnately compound leaves are again classified into the unipinnate compound leaves then bipinnate compound leaves tripinnate compound leaves and even the decompound leaves one by one we will see each type in unipinnate compound leaves when these leaves are developing from the stem there is a development of the primary rachis here this central part is considered as a rachis in the compound leaf and this primary rachis is responsible for the development of the leaflets on it if you see this second one then also we will find that here there is a presence of the primary rachis which is developing from the stem and on that primary rachis there is a development of the leaflets so in both cases that is that is in both diagram we are able to see that here the development of the leaflets on the primary rachis which is developing from the stem such a type of the leaves in which the leaflets are developing from the primary rachis that is known as unipinnate compound leaves again the unipinnate compound leaves are classified into the two types that is peripinnate and imperipinnate peripinnate means the even number and imperipinnate means the odd number of the leaflets in the first diagram if you will see that the total number of the leaflets to the left side and the total number of the leaflet to the right side are equal and the terminal leaflet is found to be absent if such type of the condition is there in which the terminal leaflet is absent then it is known as peripinnate unipinnate then in second diagram we find that here there is a presence of terminal leaflet or we can say that it is a odd leaflet and because of that here the total number of the leaves which are present in this compound leaf they are the odd in number and such type of the leaves which bear the odd number of leaflets or having the leaflet at the terminal end then they are known as imperipinnate type of the condition this may be present in the unipinnate also bipinnate also or even in the tripinnate also so peripinnate are not the type of unipinnate but this peripinnate and the imperipinnate types are completely dependent upon the number of leaflets which are present in that leaf if you see the bipinnate compound leaves then in bipinnate compound leaves you will find that here there is a petiole means here there is a presence of the stem from this stem there is a development of this rachis and this rachis is a primary rachis so from this primary rachis again there is a development of the rachis and this is known as secondary rachis so we can say that here the leaflets which are developing from the secondary rachis so such a type of the leaves in which the leaflets are developing from the secondary rachis that is known as bipinnate compound leaves so easily we can differentiate the unipinnate and the bipinnate compound leaves on the basis of its development either from the primary rachis or from the secondary rachis when the leaflets are developing from the secondary rachis at that time here from the primary rachis 
the segment will form including the secondary ratches and the total number of the leaflets which are developing on that secondary ratches and this is known as pineal or the pinna again if the same condition is multiplied means the additional ratches is again developed on the secondary ratches means here this one is the primary ratches this one is the secondary ratches and from the secondary ratches again there is a development of tertiary ratches and from this tertiary ratches now there is a development of the leaflets so such a type of the leaves in which the leaflets are developing from the tertiary ratches that is known as tripinnate compound leaves in certain leaves we are not able to find out such a type of the primary secondary and the tertiary type of the ratches and the leaves which are compound or pinnately compound but they are irregularly segmented into number of segments or the leaflets and such a type of the leaves are known as decompound leaves the best example for the decompound leaves is nothing but the coriander which is well known to everyone in phyllotaxy first of all we have to see the definition of the phyllotaxy simply we can define the phyllotaxy as mode of arrangement of leaves on the stem or axis that is known as phyllotaxy in different plants we know that the arrangement of the leaves is in a different manner as we have seen in the stem the stem is responsible to develop the node and the internode and from the nodal region there is a development of the leaves buds branches flowers fruits etc if we have to see the development of the leaves from each node then we have the different pattern or the arrangement of the leaves and that is known as phyllotaxy in first one it is alternate second one it is opposite and in third one it is whorled so just we have to give the name that is 1 2 3 third type even in the abcd you have to say that the a come first letter on the o and last one will be the w so that the ug student may not forget such type of the phyllotaxy or the arrangement of the leaf so in this way you can say that you have to write the first alternate then opposite and then the hold and write it 1 2 3 so if there is a development of the one leaf then it is known as the alternate from each node if there is a development of the two leaves from each node then there is a opposite and if there is a development of three or more than three leaves from each node then it is known as the hold type of the condition we are able to see in these diagrams in the first one there is a development of the single leaf from each node in the second diagram there are the development of the two leaves from each node and in third diagram we are able to see here the development of the four leaves from each node and in this way these are alternate type opposite type and the whole type in again the alternate and the opposite are classified into the subtypes the alternate type of the phyllotaxy is classified into the dystichus tristichus and pentastichus even the dystichus is known as 1 by 2 phyllotaxy tristichus is known, known as the 1 by 3 phyllotaxy or pentastichus is 2 by 5 phyllotaxy 
here we have to understand properly this type of the alternate type of the pilotaxi these lines indicates the axis and this is a stem now if we see the die stickers die matlab 2 so here there is a development of the leaves on two sides we will denote is the side a and side b or we can say the left and the right so the single leaf develops from each node and hence it is alternate as we are seeing the total types of the alternate phylotaxy but here the pattern of the development of the alternate leaves again is in a different manner in first type in a dystichus type of the condition there is a development of the leaves into the two rows that is the row 1 that is the a we have denoted and the row b so in this way if the development of the leaves is responsible for the formation of two rows then it is known as dystichus type of the condition 1 by 2 phylotaxy means when here the we have to draw it in the form of the circle then you will find that here such type of the condition will be there means here there will be the first leaf here will be the second leaf and there will be the third leaf so that again fourth leaf and fifth leaf so that here there will the formation of one row on the one side and another row on the another side means here there is a formation of the two rows but if we see the tristichus tri means the three and one by three phylotaxy that is here there is a formation of the first row then this one is the second row and this one is the third row so though there is a development of the single leaf from the stem at each time but then also their direction is a different the one leaf is developing on each direction and in this way here there is a development of the leaves into the three different direction and because of that there is a formation of the three different rows so the rows first one that is second row and the third row and hence as there is a formation of the three rows hence it is known as the tristichus type of the condition if we see it in the circular manner then we will find that this is the first leaf then second leaf and third leaf so again here there will the presence of the fourth leaf here there will the fifth leaf sixth leaf and etc so in this way we can say that here there will the formation of the three different rows on the stem and hence it is known as 1 by 3 phylotaxy again in the third type that is pentastichus condition that is penta means the five here this is the first row second row third row fourth row and fifth row means though there is a development of each leaf from the central axis or the stem they are responsible for the formation of five different rows means they are developing on five different directions and in this way as there is a formation of five rows it is known as pentastichus type of the condition but here if we see 1 by 2 1 by 3 and 2 by 5 then we will find somewhat different here if we see the first leaf then second leaf and then third leaf means the first leaf and third leaf they are one above the other so we have to minus it this one from this one so we will have the such type of the condition but if we see this one 
it indicate that there is a formation of one circle if you see this three rows first one second one and third one in a tricyclic type of the condition here from the first leaf to the second then third and fourth means fourth leaf is on the first leaf and from the first to the fourth again there is a completion of one circle and formation of three rows and hence it is known as the 1 by 3 phyllotaxy in first type we have seen one circle and having the two rows but when we have to see the pentastichous type of the condition then we find that here there is a development of the first leaf then second leaf then third leaf fourth leaf fifth leaf and here there will be the sixth leaf so on the first leaf there is a sixth leaf so here fourth leaf that is 4 minus 1 that is 3 matlab tricyclic here the third leaf is on the first one that is 3 minus 1 equal to diastichus and here the sixth leaf on the first one that is 6 minus 1 that is 5 pentastichus and if we see from the first leaf to the sixth leaf here we are able to see that we have completed the two circles and hence for completion of the pentastichus or the five rows we have need of the two circles and hence it is not the 1 by 5 but instead of it is considered as a 2 by 5 type of the phyllotaxy in second type that is opposite type of the phyllotaxy in which we have seen that in opposite phyllotaxy there is a development of the two leaves from each node in the first type that is the opposite dicasite here from the nodal region though there is a development of the two leaves then also the successive pairs are in right angle to each other so such a type of the arrangement of the leaves in right angle to each other in a successive pair that is known as opposite dicasite the best example of the opposite dicasite type of the phyllotaxy is found in calotropis procera of aslepidaceae again if the leaves which are developing from the nodal region and again they are in the pair that two leaves are developing from each node which is the characteristic feature of the opposite type of the phyllotaxy but here all the leaves which are developing from the nodal region they are parallel to each other means here in the first type they are perpendicular to each other and these are parallel to each other this is the difference in between these two different type of the opposite type of the phyllotaxy that is opposite dicasite that is with the perpendicular successive pair of the leaflets and in a parallel all the leaflets which are all the leaves which are developing from the nodal region they are in a parallel condition in whole type of the phyllotaxy there is a possibility of the development of the three leaves four leaves five leaves seven leaves from each node so on that basis here there are again the different types so usually we are not using the as a types in the whole type of the phyllotaxy we are simply considering that it is a whole type of the phyllotaxy and total number of the leaf, uh, leaves which are developing from each node so here there is a trifoliate type of the condition means the three leaves are develops from the each node and tetrafoliate there when there is a development of the four leaves from each node even there is a development of the five leaves from the nodal region or each node and even the seven leaves are also develops from the each node so these are different type of the phyllotaxy in addition to this here in some plant plants there is a development of the leaves in a rosette form instead of the alternate opposite or the whorled so in many members 
of the fleshy such type of the organisms of the crassulacy you will find that such type of the development of the leaves in a rosette is there in some other members of the monocotyledons here there is a development of the leaves from two sides and in this way here there is a formation of the rosette like of the arrangements then the stipil first of all we have to define the stipil stipil is what stipil is a leaf like or a scale like structure present at the base of the leaf means whenever we are talking about the any leaf then in that leaf you will find that here the leaf like or scale like structure which is present at the base of the leaf means in this way so if such a like structure is develops at the base of the leaf then this is known as stipil if the stipil develops by the leaves or stipil develops at the base of the leaf then the leaf is known as stipulate while if the stipil is not developed at the base of the leaf then it is known as the extipulate type of the leaf here there are the different type of the stipils in the first one that is the lateral which is usually found in the hibiscus plant that the two stipils are developing on two lateral sides of the petiole and hence it is known as the lateral or more appropriately it is known as the free lateral in rows the stipils are attached to the petiole and hence it is known as the adnate type of the stipil in certain members of the rubiaceae here there is a presence of the different type of the stipil that is in the form of the angle or it is present in between the angle of leaf and the stem and in some cases it is present in between the two leaves so when the stipil is develops in the axil of the leaf then it is known as intrapetiolar type of the leaf intra sorry intrapetiolar type of the stipil and when the stipil develops in between the two petioles then it is known as interpetiolar means inside the petiole and in between the petiole so they are known as intrapetiolar and interpetiolar respectively in some plants here the stipil is leaf like and such type of the stipil which show the leaf like structure are known as foliaceous type of the stipils in family polygonesi or in the members of polygonum or polygonum species you will find that here the stipil is present in the axil of the leaf and it is responsible to clasp or to encircle the stem completely and such type of the stipil are known as ocreate stipil or in angiosperm taxonomy just we have to say it as a ocre in some other plants like the smilax here the stipils are developing in the form of the tendril and such a type of the stipils are known as tendrilar type of the stipil in some members of the family moresi the stipils are developing from the ventral side of the petiole and such a type of the stipils are known as ventral stipils here the shape of the different leaves you know that in different plants the shape of the leaves are again different the first one is acicular means usually they are tubular and hollow or may be the solid such a type of the leaves are known as the acicular type of the leaves and the best example is onion we know that the leaves of the onion they are just like to that of the tubular cylindrical and the elongated such a type of the leaves are considered or the shape of the leaves are considered as a acicular then cordate type that is heart shaped 
So such a leaves having the heart shaped, they are known as the chordate. Then if this heart shaped type of the structure are stressed to both the sides, then it is known as the deltoid. If it is elliptic in its structure, then it is known as the elliptical in shape. If they are in the sickle shaped, then it is known as falcate, means somewhat they are curved just like to that of the sickle. In some plants, if we see the leaves, they are just like that of the arrowhead and they are known as the hastate. But again, the similar type is found in the sagittate also. So we have to remember that these points are directed towards outer side. If it is on the outer side, then it is hastate. And if it is to the inside, then it is known as the sagittate. Then lanceolate means if we see the ovate, the lanceolate is somewhat longer than the broad. Then linear in which the we find that both of these margins of the leaves are almost parallel to each other. And such a type of the shape of the leaves are considered as a linear type. In lyrate, here the leaves are almost incised at the basal side and this shape is known as the lyrate. And if it is opposite to that of the chordate, then it is known as the obchordate. Some other shapes are that is opposite to the lanceolate that is known as the oblanceolate means here in lanceolate this was the apex and this was the base but it is the reverse condition in the oblanceolate then oblong again both the margins are almost parallel to each other but if we see the linear and the oblong then you will find that the linear leaves are somewhat narrow and the oblong leaves are somewhat broad again ob ovate this is opposite to the ovate that is apex to the base and base to the apex then orbicular just like to that of the circular in the outline hence it is known as the orbicular then oval in the shape hence this shape of the leaf is known as the oval then ovate that broad at the base and it becomes narrower to the apex and not much more difference in between the length and the breed. If the length is more in the ovate type of the condition, then automatically we have to consider this leaf is known as the lanceolate. Then reniform that is kidney shaped. This structure is known as the kidney shaped or the bin shaped and such type of the shape of the leaf is known as the reniform. If the leaf is irregularly cut or incised, then it is known as the rancinate. And I already told in a hastate type that these lobes or the bases of the leaf are directed towards inner side, then it is known as the sagittate. The hastate and the sagittate both are the arrowhead type of the shape of the leaves. Only the difference is that in a hastate, the lobes are directed to the outer side and in a sagittate, these lobes are directed towards the inner side. This is only the difference. In spatulate means just like to that of the spatula, we find that such type of the, there is a formation of the spatula and this is the just like to that of the tail like structure. Again, there are the different margins of the leaves and on the basis of margins, again, there are the many types. If there is a development of the hairs in the margin, then such type of the margins of the leaves are known as the ciliate type of the margin. In some leaves, they are incised towards or up to the mid lamina then it is known as the cleft. If they are cut with the 
rounded margins then it is known as the crenate if the same that is the crenate is finely cut into the rounded margin then it is known as the crenulate if there is a formation of a tooth like structure which is directed towards the outer side then it is known as the dented if the same tooth like structure are again minute then it is known as the denticulate if it is completely smooth and no any structure on the margin then it is known as the entire if it is irregularly incised from outer side to the middle of the leaf then it is known as the incised in some leaves the margins are curved either to the upper surface or to the lower surface if it is curved to the upper surface that is dorsal soid then it is known as involute and if it is curved to the lower side then that type of the margin is known as the revolute then lacerate here it is irregularly torn of type of the leaves in which there is a formation of very small segments and such a type of the leaves are known as lacerate type of the margins in laciniate here it is irregular formation of the lobes of the leaves but which are narrow and this type of the margin is known as laciniate in some cases this incision to the margin is up to the middle of the lamina to the margin and then there is a formation of the lobe to the outer side or the marginal side and such type of the margin which is responsible for the formation of the lobes that is known as the lobed margin but in some cases these lobes instead of formation to the incision to the middle they are responsible for the formation up to the midrib and because of that here there is a formation of pinna like structure and hence such type of the margin which is responsible for the formation of the margin just like to that of the pinna hence it is known as the pinnatified in serrate here it is pointed and directed towards the apex means these points which are present to the margin they are directed to the apex and such a type of the cut to the margin that is known as the serrate in double serrate means each serrate again is cut into the minute serrate and hence it is known as the double serrate serrate means the if it is serrate but very finely cut at the marginal region for the form, for the formation of the small dents which are directed to the apical side then it is known as the serrate and if the leaf is cut slightly and formation of the shallow cleft on the outer side or the shallow sinus to the outer side then it is known as the sinuate so all these are the different type of the leaf margins which are very much important in description of the plant in angiosperm taxonomy there are many different bases which are found in the different plants and are very much important in description of any plant as per the taxonomic terms here the leaf base is a tapering into the petiole and such a type of the leaf base is known as attenuate in some other cases here there is a formation of ear like structure at the base so we find that this leaf base is responsible for the formation or develops into a ear lobe like of the structure and such a type of the leaf base having the leaf base is just like to that of the ear lobes and hence it is known as the auriculate in some leaves 
the base of the leaf is responsible to clasp the stem or to hug the stem and hence such a type of the bases are known as the clasping. In chordate leaves, the base is considered as a chordate. Then if the leaf base is somewhat triangular, then it is known as the cuneate. Again, the shape of the leaf we have seen that is a hastate in which these bases are directed to the outer side. Such type of the leaf shape as well as leaf base both are considered as a hastate type. In certain leaves, very commonly you will observe this in the neem plant that is the Azadia recta indica in which we find that here the both side of the leaf base are unequal. Such type of the unequal side when are present in the leaf base then it is known as the oblique type. In some leaves like the lotus and other aquatic lilies, so you will find that here there is a presence of the petiole which is attached to the center of this plate like leaves and such a type of the base are known as the pelted type of the base. In some leaves the stem is directly emerged from the center of the leaves so that here the leaf is responsible to cover the stem from all the side and such a type of the base of the leaf is known as perfoliate. In some leaves the leaf base is completely rounded such a type of the bases are known as the rounded base. If this lobe of the leaf are directed towards the petiole then it is known as the sagittate and if it is horizontal or with the horizontal cut then it is known as the truncate. So these are the different bases of the leaf. In addition to that there are again the different apex that is first one here the acuminate then acute. So if you see the acute here there is a formation of acute angle in these leaves. One is broadly and second one is the narrowly but in both cases this apex is present in the form of the acute angle. But if this acute angle is somewhat drawn outside then this type of the acute leaves are known as the acuminate. Means this is the only difference that here there is a formation of the acute angle and this acute angle is drawn to the outer side then it becomes now the acuminate. In apiculate here it is abruptly again drawn to the outer side into a fine or the hair like apex. In aristate here there is a formation of the pointed apex by abruptly decrease in the size of the lamina into the apex. In caudate type here there is a abrupt formation of the tail like structure at the apex of the leaf and such a type of the leaf apex are known as the caudate type. If there is abrupt decrease in the width of the leaf and then there is a emergence of the apex then it is known as cuspidate. If there is a presence of the notch at the apex of the leaf then such type of the leaf apex are known as emarginate. If the small spine like structure is present at the apex then it is known as mucronate. If it is completely rounded from the apex then it is known as obtuse type of the apex and if it is very slightly notched then it is known as the retus type of the apex. Then venation. If you see the venation of the leaf First of all, in angiosperm, we find the difference in between the dicot and the monocot. 
and on the basis of the venation we can easily identify the plants belongs to the dicot or the monocot if we have to see the dicot then there is a presence of reticulate type of the venation and in a monocot there is a presence of parallel type of the venation so on this basis we can identify the plants so venation is what if we see the definition of the venation then we will find that the mode of arrangement of the veins in the leaf that is known as venation and what are the veins veins are nothing but the specific type of the arrangement of the phloem and the xylem in it when we have to take the section or base of the leaves then we will find that these veins are present in it in the form of the vascular bundles means these veins are responsible to provide the water to the leaves for the process of the photosynthesis and at the same time after the photosynthesis they are responsible to transport the food material to each and every cell of the body through the phloem and because of that here there are the presence of complete network of the veins in the form of phloem and the xylem in the leaves and on the basis of this arrangement of the veins they are again classified into the two different types that is first one that is parallel venation and second one is a reticulate venation as we have seen the parallel type of the venation is a characteristic feature of the monocotyledon and the reticulate type of the venation is a characteristic feature of the dicotyledon though there are few exceptions that is if you see the smilax and the another plant that is paris then you will find that these plants belong to monocotyledon but they bear the venation of the dicotyledons so here if we see except some such a type of the exception otherwise we will find the same condition that the monocot with the parallel venation and a dicot with the reticulate type of the venation here the parallel venation will be of the different types here they are the different types in the different plants and again in the reticulate type of the venation we are able to see parallel means what all these veins which are developing from the leaves they are parallel to each other and here there is a formation of a net like structure and hence net like structure means the formation of the reticulations and hence it is known as the parallel venation and the reticulate type of the venation respectively if we see the venation into the different types or the type of the venation then we find that here the unicostate multicostate convergent and divergent this same condition is found in the reticulate venation also as well as in the parallel venation also means reticulate unicostate or parallel unicostate or reticulate unicostate convergent or parallel unicostate convergent or parallel multicostate divergent or multi uh, parallel multicostate convergent so these different type of the venation are found in monocot also as well as the dicot also in unicostate uni means the one and multi means more than one so if you see this leaf a you will find that here there is a presence of the single midrib in the center and from this single midrib then there is a development of the other laterals so such a type of the leaves which bear only the single midrib then it is known as the unicostate this is commonly found in most of the plants if you see this leaf that is the leaf b then you will find that here there is a presence of the midrib in the center first one then again here there is a additional second midrib and here there is a presence of the third midrib means here these are developing from the same point so here there are the presence of more than one midrib and hence it is known as the multicostate 
in the leaf 3 again we find the similar type of the condition there is a development of up to the seven bed ribs from the center and hence again it is a multicostate but the basic difference in between these two that one is convergent and another one is a divergent if we see this here all the cell all the veins they are meeting here in the apex but in this type we find that these different veins which are developing from the center they are traveling to away from each other if the veins are traveling away from each other then it is divergent and if they travel towards each other then it is known as the convergent in the similar manner in case of the parallel again there will be the unicostate with the single mid rib in the center multicostate means here there are the many mid ribs which are developing from the base of the leaf again they are meeting at the apex and hence it is known as the multicostate convergent but here all the veins they are travel to the opposite side or the different sides hence we can say that here they are developing from the center but traveling away from each other so such a such a type of the veins are known as the divergent and hence it is multicostate divergent so here these are the different type of the veins which are found in the different plants of the dicotyledons as well as the monocotyledons the last topic of this lecture is modification of the leaf as we know the development of the leaves is basically for the particular function in the plant and that is photosynthesis leaves are responsible for the absorption of the light energy or radiant energy and synthesize its food material but in some other cases for the particular function by the plant body they are modified into the different structures so first one that is storage leaf in family crassulaceae they are the xerophytic plants and as they are the xerophytic they are growing in a such a soil where there is a scarcity of the water and because of that they there is a need to store the water in the plant body so such a plants which are growing in soil with the less availability of the water or xerophytic in nature they develops the leaves which are almost fleshy and such a type of the leaves which are fleshy and having the more quantity of the water and stored food material are known as storage leaves and commonly they are found in the family crassulaceae in certain plants the leaves are modified into the tendrils this example we have seen in the tendrils while discussing the stem tendrils also here if you see this terminal side of the leaf it is curved and because of that you will able to see this here the terminal part of the leaves is converted into the tendril in gloriosa superba as well as in pisum sativum in both cases we find that here the terminal part of the leaves are converted into the tendril like structure which are responsible for the to provide the support during the climbing then the next one that is leaf spines usually these are again the xerophytic plants that is the apuntia in which here the stem is showing a leaf like structure and the leaves are modified into the spines so here as this plant is xerophytic to avoid the transpiration 
the leaves are modified into the spines and to store the food material and the water the stem becomes fleshy so this is a very common in the apuntia then presence of the scaly leaves in casuarina equisotifolia which is very common in everywhere in the gardens and even the asparagus which is also the common plant in the garden in both plants you will find that there is a development of the leaves from each node and these are very small and hence they are known as scaly leaves in such a type of the plants when the leaves are very small or the scaly usually the whole plant body or whole stem is green to carry out the process of photosynthesis in some plants like bignonia here the leaves are modified or some certain part of the leaf is modified into the hook like structure so you are able to see these hook like structures in these leaves and usually these hook like structures of the leaves are responsible for the climbing means it help in the climbing of the plant so leaves again or the leaflets again are developed develops into the hook like structure this is again one of the modification in leaf root that is in a salvinia which is common aquatic and ornamental plants which is usually found in the tanks in the gardens and in which the leaves which are developing from the nodal region are modified into the roots which are responsible to float the plant on the surface of the water here in this diagram we are able to see that here these leaves which are developing from the nodal region they are developing into the roots the next one is that is the phyllode phyllode is nothing but the modification of the petiole into leaf like structure so if you see this one in australian acacia this is actually the part of the petiole and from this petiole there is a development of the leaves and this can be seen in the australian acacia only during the earlier stage of the plant body and when the plant develops at that time only it is responsible for the development of the phyllodes only and such a normal leaves are found to be completely absent in it so such a type of the leaf development from the petiole is known as phyllode in some plants here to get the extra nourishment in the form of the nitrogen and to get this requirement of the nitrogen the leaves are modified to trap the insect and such a type of the leaves in which the leaves are modified to trap the insect they are known as insectivorous plants these are again classified into the leaf pitcher then venus fly trap drosera and the leaf bladder on the basis of the type of arrangement of the insect trapping unit or the structure in peacher plant that is in the nepenthes species here the part of the leaf is converted into a peacher or the pouch like structure and having the lid at its terminal end so that when the insects are inserted or entered inside this pitcher this lid get closed and the enzymes secreted by this pitcher so that the insect which is trapped inside the pitcher is killed and then the nitrogenous material is absorbed from the body of the insect in the similar manner here in a venus venus fly trap there are the presence of two leads and 
both leads comes close to each other which are provided with the stiff hairs on both the sides so when there is a insect in between these two leads at that time it is trapped and then digested by the secretion of certain enzymes in drosera here there are the development of the tentacles or the hair like structure having the glands at their tip when any insect come in contact with this glandular hairs they remain stick and later on they are killed or digested by the different enzyme which are secreted by these glands which are present on the hairs and hence these plants are responsible for the absorption of some nitrogenous matter from this organism in case of the utricularia which is usually found inside the water in a submerged condition or the aquatic plant and here there is a presence of a such type of the small bladders which are developing on the leaves or the leaves are modified into the bladder like structure so if we see this bladder like structure here there is a opening to the one side and because of that the small insect enter inside this bladder and later on they are killed and absorb the nitrogenous material from their body and in this way all these insectivorous plants which are responsible for the killing of certain insect or trapping the insect to fulfill their requirement of the nitrogen are commonly known as the insectivorous plants so in this way today we have completed this complete lecture on the leaf so thank you very much for your patiently listening of all the lectures and i am sure this will help you in preparation of your examination in ug as well as the pg so if you are benefited through this lecture series on angiosperm taxonomy then kindly share like and subscribe our youtube channel and also press bell icon for the alerts of every lecture to be uploaded on life sciences titles thank you very much